The queen has only one job too, but it's the most important of all. She must lay the eggs for the next generation of workers, drones, and even her own replacement. But first, the queen must mate. And to do that, she must leave the hive. She sets off on her first mating flight when she's about a week old. When the queen appears, she's immediately surrounded by the males, who follow her unique scent. Each of the dozen or so drones who get to mate with the queen dies in the act. The queen flies back to the hive immediately, her body carrying the sign of success. What's left of the male. She'll make a few more mating flights in the coming days. And then have enough sperm in her body to fertilize eggs for the rest of her life, which may last from one to four years. It's now time for the beekeeper to pay his respects to Her Royal Highness. but he comes with an ulterior motive. A mated queen can be sold to another beekeeper who wants to establish a new colony. Such valuable property needs to be marked, like the brand on a steer. Every day, the queen will lay about 1,500 eggs, 200,000 in a year. It's a tough job but someone has to do it. The queen's royal scent prevents the female workers from laying eggs themselves. It takes a few days for the eggs to grow into larvae. They are then bathed in a special food brought to them by workers. During its first day, a larva eats so much, its weight increases five and a half times. In six days, its weight increases 1,500 times. The larvae then spin cocoons and pupae develop inside until they emerge two weeks later as adult bees. The queen only stops laying eggs when the weather grows colder in November. Each bee makes the metamorphosis from egg to larva to adult 
in about three weeks. And there's little surprise about the newborn sex, since every worker is a female and almost every bee is a worker. In a colony of tens of thousands, only a hundred bees are born male. The dome-shaped covers of their brood cells provide extra space for their larger bodies. Worker bees act as midwives to assist them. But a worker herself has to fight her way out of her brood cell unaided. No coddling allowed here. Soon the worker will follow her well-ordered behavioral cycle, beginning with cleaning her own cell. The males, on the other hand, receive special care. They're helped out of their cells and immediately fed. In an otherwise society of equals, the male does not have to work. Even his name, drone, is another word for an idler. His large compound eyes tell of his sole purpose in life, sighting the queen on the mating flight. In a honeybee colony, every member has a specific task to perform, and everything has its place. When the colony grows so large that the bees begin to run out of room, they instinctively know that it's time for the old queen to leave with half the population, and a new queen to be crowned. First, construction needs to begin on special queen cells, in which a dozen or so new would-be queens will grow. This is the most exclusive neighborhood in the hive. As eggs, all bees are equal. But by feeding grubs a steady diet of royal jelly, a mixture of milky secretions, they're turned into queens. But before the new queens hatch, the old queen must leave, accompanied by thousands of workers who are close enough to follow her scent. They swarm out of the hive in a mad, swirling rush. Not far from the hive, the old queen lands to rest, and the swarming bees follow her. 